Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to work on defining the structure of the response which we want to send from the paginated query. So, in our previous lectures, we learned that whenever we are going to paginate an entity, in the pagination response, we want to send a response something like this. So, in the response, we want to have an object and for that object, we want to have a data property which should be an array of paginated data. Then we want the meta property, which should be an object. And in that object, we want to have properties like item per page, total items, current page and total pages. And then we also want to have this links property. And this is also storing an object. And in that object, we want to have the links for the first page, last page, current page, next page and previous page for that paginated data. So let's go ahead and let's create this type of response object for the paginated query. Let's go to VS Code. So in our previous lectures, we created this pagination provider and in that pagination provider, we have this paginate query method and for whichever entity we want to implement the pagination for that entity, we are going to call this paginate query method. So currently we have implemented the pagination for tweets. So inside this get tweets method, we are calling that paginate query method in order to implement pagination for the tweets. Now inside this method, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call this variable as response. Okay, and actually let's create this variable after we have fetched the data. So before returning the fetched data, I'm going to create this response or not even here. What I'm going to do is here, I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it as result. And whatever we are going to fetch from the database, we are going to assign it to this result variable. So this result variable is going to store an array of the paginated data. After this, now remember that from here, we are not returning anything right now. Let me go ahead and let me return the result for now. Okay. So this should be return. And before we are returning the result, I'm going to create another variable. Let me call it as response. And this response is going to be an object. In this object, I'm going to have a data property. And the data, I'm going to set it with this result. Then I'm going to have a meta property. And this is going to be an object. And in that object, we are going to specify some more properties. And then I'm also going to specify the links property and this is also going to be an object. And in that object, we are going to have some properties. So we already have the data. Now let's go ahead and let's define the property for this meta property. So here I'm going to have a property called items per page. And for now, let's set it to 10. Then we're also going to have another property called total items. And this for now let me set it to 100. Next we are going to have the current page property and let's say the current page is the first page and then let's also go ahead and let's specify the total pages property and let's say total pages is going to be 10. So currently we are hard coding these values but now let's go ahead and let's set the actual values. So items per page this will be equal to the limit query parameter value. So from the postman, when I'm setting the limit as five, then this items per page, it will be equal to five. If it is set to 10, then the items per page will be 10. So this items per page will be equal to pagination query DTO dot limit. Okay, then current page also, we can get it from the pagination query DTO because if I go to postman, there we also have this page query parameter where we are specifying the page number for which we are requesting the data. So that will be the current page. So here also I can get the current page from the pagination query DTO and there we have the page property. Now we need to get the total items and total pages to get the total items. So here let me go ahead and let me create a property and let me call it as total items. And to get the total items on the repository. So let's say we are implementing the pagination for tweet. 
so this repository variable is going to store the tweet repository on that we can simply call the count method and this is going to run asynchronously so let's also use a wait keyword here so that we will wait for the response and it is going to return us the total number of tweets from the tweet table so if the repository is tweet repository this count is going to return us the total number of tweets in the tweet table if the repository is user repository this count will return us the total number of users from the user table okay and if the repository is something else let's say comment repository in that case this count will return us the total number of comments from the comment table so in this way we have the total items let me go ahead and let me assign it to this total items property of this meta object like this and then we also want to have total pages now to calculate the total page again let me go ahead and let me create a variable let's call it as total pages you can name it anything and to get the total page what we are going to do is we are going to divide this total items okay it should be equal to here so that's why intelligence was not working total items divided by the limit so let's say the total items is 100 and limit is 10 in that case total pages will be 10 right so here i'm going to divide this total items with pagination query dto dot limit now here let's say the total items is 72 and the limit value is 10 in that case the 72 divided by 10 will return us 7.2 so here what we want is we want to get the next integer value if the result of this expression is a fractional number so for 7.2 the next integer value will be 8 let's say if the result returns 8.6 so in that case also the next integer value will be 9 so here if the expression returns an integer value then well and good otherwise if it returns a value with some decimal point then in that case we want to get the next integer value and for that we are going to use this math dot seal function okay and we are going to pass the result of this expression to this seal method now what does this seal method returns it returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to its numeric argument so whatever is the numeric value which this expression will return for that numeric value whatever will be the smallest integer greater than that numeric value that will be returned by this seal method i hope it is clear so now let's go ahead and let's use this total pages and assign it to this total pages property of the meta object so in this way we have the value for all the properties of this meta object now we are going to define the property for the links object and before we do that let's also create other variables so in this links object we want to create links for next page and previous page so for that here i'm going to create a variable i'll call it as next page and in order to get the next page from the paginated query dto we have this page property so this will give us the current page right so from the current page if we want to get the next page we can simply add one but before that we need to check if this page value is equal to the total number of pages so let's say we have total number of pages as 10 and if the value of this page is 10 that means the user cannot move to the next page because the total number of pages itself is 10 so there is no way to go to 11th page because there will not be any 11th page so here we are checking if this page is equal to total pages in that case we are simply going to return the value of this pagination query dto dot page otherwise if this page value is less than the total page in that case we are going to add one to the current value of this page and in order to make this more readable let me move it to different line like this okay so if the page is equal to total pages in that case we will return the current page which will be the last page otherwise if this page is 
less than the total page. In that case, we are going to add one to it and that will be the next page. In the same way, let's also calculate the previous page and let's call it as previous page. Now, in order to get the previous page, again, we are going to check if pagination query DTU dot page, if it is equal to one. So if we are on the first page, then the user cannot move to the previous page, right? So in that case, the previous page will be the first page itself. So here also we will use pagination query DTO dot page because this page is equal to the first page. Otherwise, if it is value greater than one, let's say the current page is three. In that case, the previous page will be two. So to get the previous page, we can simply subtract one from the current page value. Okay. And what I'll also do is to make these expressions a little bit shorter, I'll create a current page variable. And here I'll say current page is equal to pagination query DTO dot page. Okay. And now everywhere, wherever we want to use the pagination query DTO dot page, we can use current page. Here also I'm going to use current page. And here also I'm going to use current page and now we can go ahead and we can move it in the same line okay again here also let's use the current page and here again let's use current page and here also let's use current page okay and again we can move it in the same line So in this way, we have all the required variables and we have already created this data property of the response object, which we have assigned with the result, which we are getting here. And we have this meta property, which is an object. And they have also, we have defined the respective properties and the value for them. Now in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's create the properties for this links object. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.